Hello, everyone. We just saw the lone stranger. Ranger. The lone, not very, very good, not good, not very good, not very good, very, very good, very good, etc. I saved you. Dot, dot, so, dot, dot, dot. if you really want to go see an American classic this 4th of July, this, by the way, we're recording this on the 4th of July, really ought to go, I can't even say it with a straight face, but you really ought to go see something else, quite honestly. Just pick one too, is playing. I, I really enjoyed the first one. Well, as you said in the car coming back, this filmed up America very, very well, because it's like insanely silly, uh, over the top, and uh, it will... full, full of itself while... Well, Mi missing the point by several kilometers. While trying to be completely light about absolutely horrible things that America did. Well, anyway, here's the spoiler-free version. So we went, and the audience was full of kids and old people. It's to be expected, yeah, really. Yeah, because it was, I guess, being marketed as a kid's film, and old people like, Oh, the Long Ranger! Oh, I, I remember, remember that! that. Oh, oh, I remember back in the day! Oh, it's cool to do it! Yeah, the, like, like all these like poor old people are hobbling down the aisle and getting into their seats, the poor dears. And, and they were terribly unimpressed with the trailers for Thor and Wolverine. And we got a trailer for Thor too, which I care nothing about. Except for Loki. I like Loki. I hope he. I hope he kicks. I hope he kicks Thor right in the nuts. Loki shipper. I don't ship him with anyone. I just want him to beat the you shit. So out you of just him. want Loki to masturbate? Okay. I want him to kick Thor in the nuts. But we had all the trailers we had, we'd seen before, pretty much. Uh, we didn't see the Red 2 trailer before. Oh yeah, that's true, but, but it's another one of those old, old action actors that are, no, they're out of retirement working for the city. Well, we've seen it before, the well, Expendables. Well, the, well, this is slightly different than the Expendables. The Expendables yeah, because Helen Mirren's in it. It's act Expendables is actual action stars. Red, I haven't seen any of the Red films, but as far as I can tell, it's mostly non-old action stars, except for Bruce Willis, the rest of them are just old actors. It's just, part of it's like, like, look who we got to be in the movie, and I'm, I'm not gonna see I, it. I, I, I wanna see, I, I must watch the Red films at some point, simply to see Helen Mirren, Mirren shooting people. Yeah. But we got R.I.P.D. again, which I still- If you wanna see her naked, Caligula. There you go. We got R.I.P.D., which I still really wanna see, um, Pacific Rim, which I still really wanna see. What else did we get? I think we got Wolverine, and we had a whole- Fuckload of trailers. Yeah, there was this one about thinking, break like, dancing, where there was all like oh. America invent break dancing, but but the Koreans are better at now, so we're gonna get this. We're gonna get like Harvey Two Face from the Dark Knight to train us, and we're gonna be the best break dancers. And you know, Korea can go suck it. They can just play Starcraft instead. It's your stand. Ooh, yeah, it's your standard. Like you know, bring it. You know. How can you be the underdog at something? When you're going on about how we invented it, so therefore we uh, have, a, have, a, have a national right to be best at it. You can't have the underdog like that whenever they have the... the cricket, dear. Cricket. The, the UK does not do underdog stories where they're like, because we invented cricket, we must go and defeat the Pakistanis and the West Indies and, the, and New Zealand for being better at it than us. Pip, they don't do no, that. No, but they think it really Yes, they it. think it, but they don't turn it into movies. But it's your standard, you know... A coach comes in to whip up the loser team, and uh, these guys have so and, much and money. They, it, you can't yeah, have like, another dog. Too. I was thinking about this. Like they rented out a juvenile detention center for like months to train, and I'm yeah. thinking to myself, don't these guys work? Like, where is all this money coming yeah. from? You can't be an underdog thing when you've got that much money to, to rent. That you've got, you've hired a professional choreographer. You, you hire, mm -hmm. you know. Harvey from Dark Knight to be your coach, you know, just that's just really surreal. Hey, we saw that guy in the Dark Knight, let's make him train us. Um, they, they can hire all this stuff, and yet somehow they're the underdog. This is like saying yeah, it's, that... It's like, what was that, was it, was it, was it, cheerle was it Bring It, the cheerleading? Bring movie? It On. Bring It On. It's like that, but with guys that look like they're from boy bands, <laughs> doing break dancing, and here's how you know that it's purely a marketing movie. I, I think it was called, like, like, Bring the Storm or something like that, 3D. Bring something. It was, it, but but the three D was like tacked on to the title, so you know this was just it's it's, know, it's crap. If if they're underdogs, Apple are underdogs. Yes, Apple are not the be the biggest you know film production uh, film computer production you know people in the world. Far from it. But they're not underdogs. These guys are like oh France France is better than us and Korea are better than us. Not North South. It'd be funny if it was North Korea. Although I think it's kind of funny that like if this if this movie was made a decade ago, it would have been the Chinese. Possibly, uh, but it, damn those South Koreans with their really addictive. Food. I'm I, I'm not gonna cheer for the third best country in a 
fictional sport of if it isn't if it isn't fictional it should be fictional of break dancing because just because you invented the fucking thing and it's like oh we are entitled to this go fuck yourself yeah so there was that so then there was the movie and spoiler free version all right here's here's a good way to, to wrap this up um there were some points throughout the movie when i i turned to her and i said that's so like what happened, this thing in Pirates of the Caribbean, is this the same director? And she said, yeah. So at the end it comes up, directed by Gore Verbansky, and I said, he's famous, isn't he? Yeah. He's a good director, isn't he? Yeah. Well, I didn't say he was good, I said he was well yeah. known. I, 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 and I listed the film. I, I don't consider him a quote-unquote good director. And so I said, why was this bad? Like... And I said, directing's an art, not a science. I mean, here's the thing, it was a Disney movie, and it was, I have to say, one of the most violent Disney movies I've seen, but there was a, a very sick dichotomy in this film between cartoonish, over-the-top, silly zaniness juxtaposed with very horrific, very realistic, very historically accurate violence. It's and it was uneasy. It was greasy. It's the miasma of unfortunate implications and completely complete artistic missteps. Like if you're coming to hear him shout Hi O Silver away, wear a mask, shoot a silver bullet, have a white, you know, hat have a you know horse white horse named Silver and hear the William Tell Overture, you'll get that. But Which makes it more accurate to the source material than some films. I guess. So you do get all that. It hits all those Hi, World War Z. And you hit you hit Tonto, but so, it's your basic, you know, oh no's, bad guys, don't worry, we'll save everything, hero story, redemption, the end. Well, so, now spoilers. Evil white guys who get to kill off all the Native Americans, so the only Native American left is a white guy pretending to be a Native American. Yeah, so that's not spoilers, because you, here's, the, here's the thing, you couldn't... The, the, the weird part about spoilers with this movie is, at a certain point, because you're using real historical events, you know what's going to happen. It was like the, like sitting down to watch Titanic. You know it's going to sink. Like you, Any story that involves the railroad, you know they'll meet at Promontory Point. The, you know what happens to the uh, West. This you is, know what happens to Native Americans. And yes. It's, this is so problem, unfortunate implications and problematic in the same way that Pocahontas was. I still but, can't watch it. I have a lot of guilt. But, if Poca, but imagine if Pocahontas at the end, or partway through, the white people killed all the Indians, but they still celebrated because they had peace? It's a bit like that. Yeah, so um, apparently the yeah. actual guy who actually put Dan, the actual Lone Ranger, has a, he's a Texas Ranger. What, we, 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 neither of us know much about the Lone Ranger. Yes, yeah, so we're guessing. We're spoiler just... version. Oh, but it comes up like, um, what was it? It was like Colby, Texas, 1863. And they make references to the Civil War, like back during the war, and we realized that the Civil War was still kind of going on in 1863. Yeah, the, the, the villain's plot is to create a railroad to connect all America. Like, wait a second. Not like, really big one on of the, the... Yeah, one of the bad guys says he was in Gettysburg. I want to make sure Gettysburg happened at that point. You, you I think it possibly did. I know what I want to do. You amuse the fans. The... Oh, um... The, okay, the thing about the Lone Ranger, the Dan and the brother, there, there is an actual ranger in this called Dan who is heroic and gets killed, and everyone seems to think that Dan is the Lone Ranger. Now, I'm not a Lone Ranger's aficionado, so I'm guessing that in the original mythos, Dan was the Lone Ranger, and uh, the new guy, John, I think he is, would have been, is just the, the replacement one. So this is a little bit like Zorro the Gay Blade, where Zorro is replaced by his gay brother. Oh, fabulous. I just... Yeah, that's a great film. Um... But, you know, Zorro the Gay Blade Ooh! wasn't being serious. The Battle of Gettysburg took place July 1st through 3rd, 1863. Back in the day. Back in the day of last the, month. I know, right? And it didn't say what month it was. <laughs> I mean, we know it's not December because they weren't celebrating Christmas or anything like that. So, yeah. So, so wow, there you go. The, 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 this is an act... And, it's an anachronism stew, but, but that's, not so that's funny. one of the things that you think that somebody would at least fact check to make sure that if you're referencing the Civil War, that it's ended. They had a map of the Texas Territory, which didn't look like that in 1863. And hell as well didn't look like that during the Civil War. There was a. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure Texas was on the side of the of the South during the Civil War. I think it was still a territory back then, I but did. 
But here's the thing is you can play with anachronisms a little bit in the Wild West. Uh, Shanghai Noon did this very well. It was silly. And but you gotta love Jackie Chan. So it was it was like you're like oh they didn't really have didn't that. Jackie Chan was supposed to be filming a film on one of the two towers during 9/11. Really? Yeah, he uh, he 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 dropped out of the film in order to make another film called The Tuxedo. I actually saw The Tuxedo. It, it saved there. Jackie Chan's life. There you go. Should have grossed more. But um, see, it, that was all weird. It just felt wrong. I mean, a lot of the set pieces were good. Um, there were there were some anachronisms, like I said, that the map of Texas. I said that's not what Texas looked like in 1863. And what did you say? Um, I'm sure I mentioned something about thinking that Texas was working for the South. In the no, war. you said this is why I love you. Oh yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. So there was that. that was, uh, this map was not actually looked at closely. It was just in the background of one shot. Yeah, and I just because I look at props, you know. But I mean, okay. So Johnny Depp, I do love me some Johnny Depp, and. There's a lot of similarity. There's a lot of homages if you can look for it. Like, um, there's one bit that could could be a if coincidence. You look for it. Is that code for if you can see? No. Um, well, this this little bit I saw in the beginning, and it could be a coincidence because Gorver Gorver, the director didn't work. I can't say his last name. Verbinski. Verbinski didn't work on um, uh, Sleepy Hollow, which Johnny Depp was in. But there's a part where he has this little toy, this little flip toy, like one of those old colonial ones with a cage on one side and the bird on the other, and it's the bird in the cage is an optical illusion. There's a part where the, the little boy in the beginning picks up, you know, the same kind of thing. And I was like, oh, just like in Sleepy Hollow, the Johnny Depp was in. But if you were a big fan of the of the pirate with the, uh, the, the tall, weedy pirate with the false eye from Pirates of the Caribbean, there's a version of him. He's a band. Yeah, that but it's not played by Mackenzie Crook. No, it's played by... He was in Demons. He was the bird vampire. Well, that's kind of cool. Good for him. But yeah, not and really. it's... If I was Mackenzie Crook, I'd be quite annoyed about being in two episodes of Demons. Wow. There was a certain point I turned to her and I said, "This is th there's a lot of this that's similar to Pirates of the Caribbean. Is it the same director saying, yeah? Like, there's, there's a, of course, a shot where, you know, Tonto is somehow managed to get a ladder pivoting between two trains in motion, and he's, like, riding one and he steps off onto the other, just like the way Captain Jack Sparrow did at the beginning of and the first Pirates. I, and I, 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 I worry that Johnny Depp has forgotten how to act. He, um... He seems to just co co connect a bunch of random mannerisms together and calls it a character. It's a bit like um, I think he's I think he's looking for a sketch comedy show to be in. Which you know, if you are, you know, please let us know. But um, if you're watching, write the show. But um, it was he, so. Here's the here's the part that that was that was pretty obnoxious. So the, there's two bad guys, and one is an outlaw. It was a cannibal, and um, allegedly one, allegedly a cannibal. It's implied that he's a cannibal. Like, you know, show him eating someone's heart, they just make it pretty obvious that he did, because it's a Disney show after all. Well, whenever the, the, the cutting out of the guy's heart, you know, he, he seems to be quite low down about I there. was wondering if he cut out his liver or his See, dick. Yeah, I was thinking that they castrated him. I was, like, thinking to myself, hmm, Disney, not only have you given us a brothel this film, but you've given a guy getting his dick cut off. Because he, no. like, he stabs him around the belly button region. He goes to work, and you see one of the other guys turn and, and vomit. Yeah. And then, so you hear, and he's known for eating his parts of his victims. And then he turns around, he's got blood all over, he's got blood all over his face. But the guy's chest is intact, so I figured he either cut out his liver and ate it, or cut off his dick and ate it. Yeah, but then his trousers were still there, so I was just like... Well, he could have, like, gone through the fly. Could have. It's... <laughs> You have to think about these. You know the guy playing the villain there, Butch Cavendish. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the guy playing Shredder in the new Turtles movie. Oh, there's controversy about that. Too. So if someone else is getting whitewashed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, although all right, so the scenery was good. Okay, there were things that were good about the movie. The scenery was good. The cinematography was good. Set, like I said, the set design was good. People did a good job of acting. It was just the unfortunateness of it all. Like the, the really. Horrible implications. Sorry, we like, had a focus-based terror attack there. But we fixed it. We fixed it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the the Comanche were the Indian bad guys. Um, oh, not really bad guys. Uh, Do you of this film? Well, it, as as quite happen, often happens in westerns these days, the Indians they're not the bad guys. They're just kind they're of not, there. They're but not the good guys. They're just off screen for most of the time as white people rule everything and do everything. They're they're not even allowed to be bad guys anymore. And then they're not to be characters. They get slaughtered. Yeah, and then they died, but so then the in white people... In huge, huge numbers, too. And there's this part where, you know, the, the main guy's like, don't worry, you know, he says to the Comanche chief, 
I can, I can, I know that it wasn't you that was doing the raids. I can, I can stave off this war. I can fix everything. Just and, all, and the guy is like, well, why bother? We're already ghosts. We're already dead. I, and it was so. And you have to think that that must have been the mindset towards towards the end of of Manifest Destiny, which wasn't in the '60s BTW. It was, you know, in the 1880s, but whatever. You know, I mean, it's just so because. And that, that's just what struck me so much. It's just so perfectly American. That that point of that was, I mean, it was completely missed. Like, Johnny Depp's character, you find out midway through the movie, is not the wise man, you know, he appears to be actually, when he was a kid, he saved these two white men that he found out in the desert, and, you know, he takes them back to his village, and they get nursed back to health, and one of them finds an ingot of silver in the river, and they ask him, where did the silver come from? And he's like, oh, I don't know, it's just in the river. And like, where's the river come from? He's like, I don't know if I should tell you. And so they give him a cheap pocket watch, for a serious robot pocket watch. And he's like, oh, okay, well, the river begins here, and they find all the silver. And they're like, ooh, we could come back and mine all the silver. So they massacre his couldn't, village. Couldn't they have just walked where the river went? And found it themselves. Yeah, they could have followed. I mean, if you know the river is flowing in this direction, if you go here, but whatever. Yeah, it's a bit unnecessary. So pretty much, this 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 little boy who will grow up to be Tonto uh, saw his entire village massacred and slaughtered. Knew he was the one that sold that sold them out, and that was kind of cool. You know, he had this tragic backstory. But the framing device for the movie is you start in the nineteen thirty three in San Francisco, with this kid dressed like the Lone Ranger who goes into like a wild west extravaganza. And sees like all these like mounted buffalo. How, how old was Tonto? Because he was eight or something in the flashbacks. That was twenty years before him. Making Johnny Depp, making to- adult Tonto twenty eight, or about half as old as Johnny Depp. Well, I, well I was thinking that because if he's about thirty, thirty tops during the movie, you know, about sixty years later, he would be 90. almost ninety. So that would work for how decrepit it was. Yeah, because I was doing that math in my head. Okay. But so this 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 kid, this little snot of a kid dressed like the Lone Ranger, was looking at like the buffalo and noble savage in a state of habitat, and you realize it's an elderly Tonto. Yeah, and tells him who proceeds to sit him down and tell him the entire story, a la the Princess Bride. Apparently, like you know, the Lone Ranger becomes a her- heroic myth of some sort, but Tonto gets a job as a waxwork in a in a in a hey let's look and stare at the Native Americans type deal. Yeah, it's. It was, it was, so, and it was, like, as a framing device, it didn't work, because in Princess Bride, you know, you got the feeling that the grandfather was kind of fudging some details and stuff like this, but, you know, the little kid actor was obnoxious. He, and well, I didn't think he was obnoxious. He reminded me as a slightly less obnoxious version of Danny from the 1990s uh, Shining adaption, but, you know, Danny in the 1990s Shining adaption was awful. So right. I've seen worse. And so we were working it out that, we, we worked out that if he's... We said maybe about eight or nine in San Francisco um, in 1933. Because of what we know of the canon, he is yeah, Rough techni- knowledge, it could be wrong. Neither of us are experts. We were hoping that he would be the grandson of the little boy in the movie in 1863, who was actually the nephew of the Lone Ranger, which would make the boy who the story is being told to the Green Hornet. Yeah, because if you look at the original canon, because uh, the same guy created both, and... The, the the connection is like the, the nephew or whatever or the son of the of the of the Lone Ranger is actually the father of the Green Hornet, which makes it really really the weird. The grandfather. Uh, or or grandfather. It's, there's a connection. There's yeah. a familial connection between the Green Hornet and the Lone Ranger, um, and which makes it really weird when you think that Tom Wilkinson, who spoilers is the baddie in this, played the father of the Green Hornet in the in the movie that came out a couple of years ago, which was honestly better than this one. Yeah, it was just so it was it was depressing. It was. It was surprisingly dark for being so cheerful. There was a part with CGI cannibalistic bunnies. Twice. And, twice, and that just wasn't good. It was just kind of very, very like America to miss the point. It was very, like I think I said this before, it was a sick dichotomy. It was greasy and nauseating. Because, you know, they're like, oh, well, we stopped the bad guy, and spoilers, of course, he dies. You know, under tons and tons of silver ingots at the bottom of the river he stole them from. How poetic. It doesn't matter. The West is conquered anyway. We know what happens to Native Americans. America is forged into the cud-chewing, iTunes-listening, hamburger-snorting, dem gays my guns abomination that you see before you. <sighs> the, um, a couple of little bits. 
Okay, uh, they go into a brothel, and then the... That was kind of cool. The, the random, this just random preacher's like, evil, evil, at Johnny Depp and Lone Ranger. And then they go in there, and then just after some, uh, Helena Bonham Carter points out... Oh, she was good. She, I'll get to her in a second. ...points out that the Native Americans have started attacking people. You know, as soon as she points it out to them, everyone else apparently in the town realizes that... No, 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 that, no, no, no. She, she pointed that out to them because a mob came. And they, he, she was like, well, it looks like we got some trouble, that Indian pal of yours, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I thought, I thought, I thought the mob just arrived after she said that. Because I was, I was <laughs> thinking it was like a racist version of the Wiley Coyote gravity thing, where he walks off a cliff and he notices and then he falls. Oh, no, there was... But one of the good things about this was there were only two really big female roles, and that was Rebecca, the love interest-esque, and um, Red, Hella Bonham Carter's um, really, really, really awesome um, brothel owner, Madam. Yeah. With the with this with an ivory scrimshaw fake leg, and I don't know about you, but it's it's like when we saw Superman. I wanted to see a prequel about the Civil War and Krypton. I would fucking love to see a movie just about her, because yep. she was hardcore. She was awesome. I'm just thinking, you know, Helen Von Bonham Carter. Fanfic writers, get on it. She needs to work with Johnny Depp again. In fact, I would love to see you. You know, this is just a mind blowing idea. Imagine those two working with Tim Burton. That well, would be interesting. I I think she's a good actress. But anyway, so her character pretty much had this rifle that, that had the, the boot, the, uh, the heel of her boot flipped down, and she could use, use this fake leg as a rifle, which was awesome. And she was a hard ass brothel owner in that, and that was cool. And then Rebecca, the, uh, the helpless damsel distressed love interest, was anything but. Like when the, when the Comanche, okay, when the Comanche, they're actually bandits, come to raid her house, she like has the rifle out, you know, she's, you know, Every step of the way, sticking up for but herself. I'm wanting to know why the hell did the one villain arrange for the other villain to be brought across to be hung, and then rescued, and then sort of does shit, and then then suddenly he's working for him openly, and people are taking orders from him. It's like, hey, dude, um, wasn't this guy supposed to be hung to give us all like you know happiness or something for the well, trains? Well, I think no, I think with the, with a train guy, um, it served his interest at the time to have him hung. So he could go back and get the silver himself, but now that, you know, he's like, oh, well, I have this guy, I might as well pretend the guy never was going to betray him. Yeah, but why does everyone else just not, not miss a beat where everyone's like, oh, the guy who was supposed to be hung last week, okay, we're working very with him now. Yeah, that's true, that is kind of a plot. Well, he was never officially pardoned, or, and he's apparently such a famous, feared outlaw that, you know, there's pictures of most of him all over the place, people would recognize him. But, yeah, it was just... It had a huge, you know, it had a very good production value. The, the scenery was beautiful. Uh, there are a lot of places in the American West I'd love to visit, like these huge rocks and deserts and canyons and shit. And, and that Northern was... Valley. Yeah. And that, and that was really cool, but it was just so... I don't know. It was just wrong and off. And Army, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish. Army Hammer would make a decent Batman. He'd be imposing enough with the, with the height. He's like six five. Oh, speaking of the army, there's this part where the cavalry comes in, and the general, the captain of the cavalry, look, it looks identical to Custer. And I think it's, a, it's, a, it's Barry Pip. And so, pretty much, um, you know, they go and they venge against the Comanche, and they say, "We return them for their slaughter tenfold." And there's a there's a part where he's like, "Don't move, the American army!" and and the good guy, the Lone Ranger's like, oh, see, you were tricked into, into this war. It was never the Comanche that did anything. You, you know, you were tricked into it. And the bad guy's like, yes, but can you live with the fact that you slaughtered thousands of innocents? And he's like, uh, uh, you're right, the railroad men must be right. I gotta kill more stuff. people innocently. And so I was like, wow, what a great metaphor for the American army in, in you know, in the, in the, the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. So you were there. Never were any weapons of mass destruction. You were tricked basically into going into a war and sending your men to die and killing hundreds upon thousands of civilians. Uh, uh we must have had a good reason. Everything's fine. And it was Barry just... Pepper, he was in Battlefield Earth, where mm. there was a really convoluted, silly plot involving gold. Mm. So it was like. But we did get to see, we did get to see a trestle bridge blow up, blow up, and we did get to see several train derailments and a train plunge headlong into the river, which was I, I guess. And there were um. This was I came up with, but um, it's, I, this is going to be my interpretation because the Lone Ranger is supposed to be Dan. So what I'm thinking is yeah, the whole joke throughout the whole movie was that he, um, the wrong brother was picked by the spirit horse Silver to be the Lone Ranger. Yeah, so I'm thinking it was Dan. So I'm thinking that you know Tonto is insane and he's giving a very very inaccurate version of what happened. So I'm thinking both brothers died. 
However, um, Dan's heroic, you know, battle against Butch Cavendish became uh, became a myth, which later on became like a little like, story like or a short story. Like dreadful novels or like you know yeah. adventure stuff for and kids. Tonto attempted to you know blew up the bridge to try and stop the West Wind and everything, but all of his people died and. Uh, but he completely failed, and he became completely insane, and therefore, uh, it's all it's all bullshit. Yeah, the whole story was told because of this this weird framing device from the '30s, you know, kind of like Tonto might be an unreliable narrator, um, like, yeah, like, one, like like the chief from um, from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There's one bit where he's all like trading with people, like giving them items and taking other items, like giving dead bodies things, like random things, like feathers or whatever, in exchange. But one of the bodies, he gives a. A, a peanut bag that the kid in the 30s gave him. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, I can see kind of what they were going for, but it just didn't work. It just it did it didn't. Something about it was one step to the left, and it's really depressing because you know we the, the film you know ended and credits ran. I said, "Is there a stinger?" And she said, "No, only Marvel does that." So we got out and stepped in, you know with the crowd into the blinding light of mid afternoon Westchester, Pennsylvania, and. You know, from this framework of the old West and you know what made the country a manifest destiny, and I wonder, I wonder if they found Edward Snowden yet. I wonder if he's safe yet. The, I mean, it's just like, oh, I have to charge my GPS when I get home. The only good part of it, you know, unless it's very loosely being used, um, is when they're playing the William Tell overture because it's just got the right mix of 1950s style mindlessness and yeah, silly the old lady in front of us going. Like this while it was happening. Yeah, although even that doesn't work because they used a 1950s sounding version and, compare, and com, com, but, mixing that with the action that was going on, it was a little, it wasn't intense enough. So and it was during again very violent things happening. Yeah, Tonto at one point leaps like and falls like 150 million feet, lands back first onto you know rocks of silver. Which uh, someone looked this up for me because I forgot to Google it. I know that you can get like you you can find gold nuggets. Like, gold, you know, is one of those things that occasionally you can find in small bits. I thought that silver was like gold in that you find the ore, which has flex of it, and you have to melt it down and extract the silver in molten form, the way you do with gold. Like, I know you can find bits of it, but it's very rare to find whole hunks of pure silver. So someone get on that for me. This film, I'm sure smelting has to occur. This film was a series of missteps. Seriously, I mean, you're I know gonna, what they were going for. If you're gonna if you're gonna connect the Lone Ranger with actual weighty shit and not just have you know white guy, Native American guy running around solving crimes or whatever, you know if you're gonna actually try to do weighty shit, including like you know the manifest destiny and the death of all the Native Americans and shit, and you know the murder and genocide, then you gotta do it seriously. It's like doing a yeah. This is you know referencing the little Lindsay, but this is like Disney doing a movie based on the Diary of Anne Frank. I mean, you know what it almost made me think of, but this is a way that worked? Blazing Saddles. Our sheriffs are what? You know? I mean, it took, like, you know, actual historic things, you know, a lot of racism and everything that happened in the Old West, and, and made it funny. Ironically, there were a lot of black cowboys. A lot. Because cowboys, it was, you were fairly low on the, on the societal rung, so yeah. they had a lot of the white, white sort of cowboys were the minority. Well, you know what I was actually thinking is... Like, you know, because they show the Chinese uh, railroad laborers being, you know, ra being racist against and shot and stuff like that. And I actually thought to myself, well, at least African Americans get off light in this one. I don't think we've had any any of their kind of racism. Well, you saw every single time there was a servant, it was a black guy. Yeah. Well, I, actu I actually wondered about that because they, there's, a, there's, a, there's, an old, there's an old guy who's helping out on the farm of the love interest, you know, and he's like, you guys get inside, I'm going to shoot them with the pistol. I actually thought, well, if the Civil War is still happening, that guy might really be a slave. Yeah, it's... You don't... Because I don't remember if the Texas this, territories were slave territories or not. This is like the... I, I think there were slave territories. It's, it's Texas broke away from Mexico because Mexico had loved slavery. Um, Texas was very into slaves. Sorry, guys. Alamo, if you're Texan, if you're, if you're part of the Alamo, no. They, they, they were protecting slavery. They were douches. Mexico was... Better. Oh yeah, because there was the, there was the coal hand on the uh, on the train. Mm -hmm. He got shot, and then there was the um, red had a had a. Uh, although he might have been a hired man. Yeah, we. Because th th they, they didn't bring up yeah. slavery at all. At least it's not like the Patriot where they claimed every single slave was actually a servant. Yeah. And you know the British, and you know they didn't. You know it's not it's not revisionism to the degree of like the Patriot or anything, but they just didn't bring it up. This, this whole Which thing is probably good because God only knows what would have happened if they had. They, this is a, the whole thing is like 
if you if you see my Blackbeard's ghost review, I complain about the fact that they have Blackbeard turning up, make him kid friendly, and then they also have his horrible things referenced, so it's just off screen. This is very similar to that, but across the whole film. The whole film you've got these real things are there, just kept a little bit off screen and you know not treated with any weight, and it's really really distracting. Yeah, it's like you this yeah. happened and it's horrible and it's but they missed the point rather than making it like the point of it and you know being like well geez you know maybe we should rethink our ways 1933 like there's a part where he's like you know just got done telling about this huge huge massacre which occurred with basically an early version of the Gatling multiple round guns so a machine gun the cavalry have and they just mow down waves and waves and waves of, of Comanche warriors and then so the little kids like they all died they were all killed all the Indians and the settlers and Dan and everyone for the silver. And he's like, yes. And that was the only, I mean, it was just so American. Yeah, if you're gonna... So surreally, bizarrely reverent of something that wasn't ever correct in the first place. And it just... If you're going to do... Even Wild West did a better job of condemning that kind of mechanical we venture. Wild, Wild West? Yeah. We go. It's this is it's if you're gonna if you're gonna do treat it silly, treat it silly and keep the get rid of the the real life shit. Don't bring up the real life shit while treating it silly. It's not good. And we sat down and thought about it. So assuming this kid was like nine in nineteen thirty three, and that would make him by nineteen forty one, he technically this little kid might go and die in World War Two. He'd be draftable. He'd, he'd draft into the age he'd be draftable if he's not the Green Hornet. And it was just like... Well, if he's the Green Hornet, he'll be really, 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 really rich and in charge of a newspaper. That's true. So he wouldn't have to worry about the Second World War. But it was just so... We saw it on Fourth of July. Like, I bought a, I bought one of the Phantom Fun Packs of fireworks. We're going to go out in the driveway and blow shit up. But then we're going to film something for Rap Critic. But I guess that's not very American. Nothing's more American than Rap Critic. He's a goddamn American hero. You remember that. You watch his reviews. But yeah, don't go see it. Don't bother. I mean, if you really, 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 you know, are in the mood, I'm sure it's on Netflix. You know, the original series. I'm sure there's a torrent for it. I'm sure it's on DVD. Just watch Pirates of the Caribbean with the soundtrack of, with the audio from the 1950s show. At least Jay Silverheels, as far as I can recall, was a real Native American. Yeah. Or, or Despicable Me Too? Yeah. No, go oh, see that. The Tonto. Tonto, they, they were trying to make it into this really, you know, away from a stereotype and really interesting and diverse and weird and, you know, interesting. But then, they just made up all the regular stereotypes that existed in Tonto beforehand. They just added a bunch of random shit. And then they added him some extra negative stereotypes, including him stealing guys' alcoholic drinks. That only happened one time, though. I know, but it's still, it's like he steals, he steals a drink once. It's an alcoholic. It's just like unfortunate implications all over the place. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I do like Johnny Depp, but again, if you're watching, you're amazing. But I don't think he was right for this part. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's American actors, you know, who could have who could have been good for this part. I know that you know he kind of is the the star power behind this, which is cool, I guess. There's no, there's almost no Native American parts in Hollywood. When one comes up, give it to a fucking Native American, please. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole thing, like, you know, with, um, I, I think that's why they scrapped um, a live version, action version of Akira, because they wanted to make it in New York City and make everybody white. I think they wanted to set it in Tokyo, but make everyone white. Oh. See, if I was doing a live action version of Akira, what I would have done was, they set it in Japan, but I would make every single different gang, like, you know, sort of make them, make, make, make them different, you know, uh, ethnicities. Because then you could have, uh, in the same way that, you know, you've got, you got like, you know, Caucasian gangs or, you know, you've got Hispanic gangs. Obviously, it's not hot, cut and dry, that That's silly. if there was one gang that was like the actual indigenous people of Japan that, like, oh. no one likes to talk about? Google it. Oh, yeah, the, the guys, the, the very, they're very similar. They're culturally similar to Russia. Yeah, the, the northern, the northern. You Google them because Japan was horrible. So I'm thinking, like, you know, the, if the clowns were, say, all white or something, but, you know, all Canada's gang were still Japanese, you know, you know that sort of thing, making, because mm -hmm. Japan's a little less eth ethnically diverse 
culture than say America. Yeah, but go go watch Akira. If, if go they, rewatch that. Let's you know, they could, if they do Akira like that, that that's how I think it could work. But making everyone white, do not Dragon Ball Z that thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you if you're if you're going to Lone Ranger expecting family fun, you might find it. If you're expecting nostalgia, you definitely won't. It's not what you think. Unless you're seventy, you don't give a shit. Yeah, it's not what you think it's going to be. I'm sorry to say, so that's where we stand on that. It's not good. But um, let's go blow shit up, drink beer, and eat corn. Okay, and uh, next vlog you'll see from me is likely going to be Pacific Rim. Uh, I'm probably going to go see it with Arna Carian when I'm back home. I'm probably going to go see Pacific Rim, but I'm not interesting by myself, so watch where we log it. You can vlog it. I'll be like, whoa, there's giant robots. And it's, it, was, it, was, it was directed by a Mexican. It's great. It makes film renegado happy. And it looks like the first episode of Evangelion, which is the only one that I've seen. Sorry, Mike. Ah. So bye, everybody. <laughs>